I'm really happy and excited to, for you guys to have, attend this talk. Uh, and I prepared this talk in, the, in a slightly different way from the, the, the previous ones. And this, this one is a more of a, sum, a sampler of what you might get in class. So I've gone to all my, the, some of my classes I teach and taking bits and pieces about sea level rise and the, about tide, tidal characteristics to, to form a story that might be interesting to you. So then why this talk? Uh, the, the, uh, this is my outline here. And the, 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 the reason for this talk is to give you a flavor of what you get when you, 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 you start classes uh, this semester and throughout some, some classes, you might take them one or two years uh, after, after, after this year. And um, the, the, the way I've arranged the talk is first to start with tides, just simple description of the tides that might correct some of what you know about tides or uh, maybe it might be just familiar. And that is a kind of a staging ground to be able to understand this sea level change, what drives sea level change and what are the impacts of sea level change. So if we, in order to, for me to understand where we are and how much you guys know about the tides. And I invite everybody, I see Larry Swanson in this group here. So every, everybody can go into the poll question. Here is the poll question. And uh, choose, choose, one of, choose one that has nothing to do with tides. We're doing quite well. It's exciting. I see a lot of movement on the choices. Okay, I think we've settled, we've settled down and we have a, so the brown tide and the red tide have a tie, which is great. And uh, equinox tides and uh, the M2 tides and none of the above uh, follow the none of the above actually has four people. So the 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 terms that have nothing to do with the tides are red tide and brown tide. So you guys know your stuff. Uh, maybe I should stop here and we can all all go back home, go back to what we are doing. Thank you very much for participating and in that little poll question. So let's continue with the, with the slide. Um, so let's define tide. What, what is tide? So I simply defined tide is a periodic rise of and fall of the sea level within a given time interval between four and 25, 26 hours. So if uh, sea level rises and falls within 10 seconds, and that's normally the, the, the waves, the wind waves, uh, the swells when you go at the beach, that's the kind of, they range between five and 10 seconds. So those will not be tides. It's, it has to be between four and 25 hours. And in fact, for most of the ocean tides, it's between 12, and the 25 hours. The four and the eight are normally seen very close to shore and in estuaries and lagoons. That's when you see, you see those, we call them overtides. So why should anybody bother studying tides? And um, so a branch of marine scientists called marine physics, uh, if you're a marine physicist, uh, tides would be one of the things you study. And 
apart from being a marine physicist, if you are a marine, a marine biologist, a marine chemist, a marine geologist, or you are studying sustainability, why would you care about, about tides? You would care about tides because tides affect coastal circulation. They affect mixing and they affect the density distribution and the pressure in the, in the, in the ocean. And that affects the distribution of food for the animals and also transport. Uh, of 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 the of the larvae and the anim and, and 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 the animals themselves. So that's why we need to for that. But also in terms of energy, uh, in, in the the tide can tides can be used to produce energy and this green energy uh, because it's renewable. So tides are very important uh, and 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 also when you have. Um, passage of storms like what we just had, the Isaiahs, they, they, they tend to modify the tides and also tides can magnify or let's say amplify the impacts of, 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 um, of, the, of the storms passing through an area. So let's continue and try and, uh, and see how we can understand tides. I hope you can see my cursor. So here is the representation of the, of the earth. That's the center of the earth called CE. And then we have the moon there. So when you have the rotation, and I have a very simple demonstration of my car keys. If I rot do a very strong rota rot uh, quick rotations, I increase the rotation speed, the speed my, the string stretches more and um, as it decreases, it stresses less. But that st stretching is caused by the centrifugal force. So for the, for, the, for the tides, what you have, you have the gravitational pull from the moon, trying to, so the, 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 the water is being pulled towards the moon, but on the opposite side, where there's no moon, there's another force which is pulling water the other way, the opposite way, and that is the centrifugal force. So it's a balance between the centrifugal force and, and, and the, the, the gravitational pull of the moon. So, and that is simple. That's, that, that was explained by Sir Isaac Newton many, many, many moons ago. There is another thing we need to understand tides. Usually, the, the, the consecutive high waters are not the same height. You have one a little bit lower than the other, and then another one will be almost the same as the two, the, 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 the one before. So the, 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 the the, the figure I've, I have here it shows very well. If you have the moon at the celestial equator of Earth, then the two bulges from one end to another will be exactly the same at any particular location or latitude. But if you have the moon declined at an angle, like in this bottom panel here, and you, let's say if you're in New York, which is about 42 degrees latitude, you're here. So at one time, you're gonna see high tide here and you're gonna see the, after 12 hours, you're gonna see tides here because there's that, it's, it's, it's rotating. So one part, and let me go to a, a much bigger figure here, so if you are at, say, this latitude here, let's pick this as um, I'm gonna annotate. So we're gonna, we're gonna pick this area here versus here. It's the same latitude, it's just gone round uh, for 12 hours, it's gone halfway round. So the tide here, you're gonna see it a higher tide than 12 hours later, this, this side, 
when you, when you, your point is at this side. And when you go back to this 24 or 24.884 hours, then you're gonna see a high, high tide. That's what causes the tidal inequality. So now we, we, we understand that tides are, are, are produced by differential forces uh, of the sun and the moon and the centrifugal force. And there's another thing that we need to understand that the earth and the moon rotate in this common center. It's like a little dance between the moon and the, and the, and the sun, and, and the, moon, the, the moon and the earth. And the period that it takes for the moon to go around the earth is 27.32 days. This is called the sidereal month. Unlike the, it's, it's different from the synodic month. What's the synodic month? The synodic month is when you see a new moon and then about almost 28 days later, you're gonna see the, the new moon again. But in, 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 the truth of the matter is, in fact, it's usually 29 point something days. But in my classes, I tend to simplify it and say, you know what, For as far as the moon is concerned, you can't go wrong by just saying 28. So just remember 28 days. It makes life simple that way. So, so for the moon, the moon causes tides with a 12.42 hours. And that is the M2 tide. So why 12.42 hours? It's because when, when the moon is going around the earth, because it takes this 27.32 days, after one day, when the earth is rotated around, the moon will have moved a little bit, a tiny little bit away from where it was when it started. And so the earth needs to rotate a little bit more in order to catch up. And that is the 0.42 hours where it comes from. Or for the full day, it will be 0.48, like 50 minutes, if you, if you equate it. But that was the moon. If we come to the sun, the sun, the sun causes the 12 hour tide. And 12, 24 hours later, it will be still in sync. So it will be 12 hours or 24 hours. And that is the S2 tide. Both the moon and the sun cause also daily the diurnal tides. They are the M1 and the S1, and then it goes on like that. There are many species of tides, but for, for, for today's talk, it suffices to talk about the M2 and the, the S, S2 tide. Uh, I have a type on my bottom line there, but I just wanted to say, but wait, what about other planets and the stars? Don't they cause gravitational pull on Earth to cause tides? Yes, they do. They do. And all, all the planets do cause gravitational um, pull and the stars. But guess what? They are too far away so their contribution is so small, it's, a, it's less than 0.1%. So we're good when we consider the earth, the, the moon and the sun, and it's good enough to, 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 to ignore the, the, the others. So when, when you go, uh, I'm sure some of you have gone to, 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 to the, to the Gulf of Mexico, if you go fishing or for tourism, and you'd be surprised the tides there are not the same as ours. Because here in New York, we have two high waters and two low waters in a day. But if you go to, to the Gulf of Mexico, say you go, you, you, you go to, um, to, 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 to Texas, uh, you go to Louisiana, you, you see that they have only one high water and one low water a, a day. Those are called diurnal tides. So here in New York, we have semi-diurnal 
tides. And in the Gulf of Mexico, they have Diano tides. If you go to like uh, a, a the West Coast, most of their, of their tides you're gonna see will be the mixed semi diano If you went to the Philippines, you, 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 you'll find that they, they will be mixed, but mixed mainly diano. Uh, if uh, most places in the, in, the, in the Pacific have diano tides. So that has to do with how the ocean responds to the pool of the, or to the gravitational forces of the, of the sun and the, and the moon and the, the big ocean that, that, that the Pacific responds only to mainly the diano tides. It ignores the semi diano And whereas the, the Indian Ocean and, the, and the, the Atlantic respond more to the semi diano tides. I'm sorry. So, good. We know quite a lot about tides by now, but how do we, how do we really determine tides? We could go and uh, take a stick and uh, plant it somewhere on the beach and start measuring, seeing how much tide we've got. And actually that's how it started in the good old days. And the people very quickly figured that was not very clever way of measuring tides. So we had to find a permanent way to have a real tidal stuff and uh, the tidal staff would be graduated and uh, there will be somebody who will go and uh, make records of that uh, every hour. And uh, uh, now, nowadays we don't need to, to do that. You, uh, it's, it's totally automated. You can, uh, and it either measures the, the, the water height or the pressure of the water, which is translated to the height, how high the water the water is. Now, there is a challenge to that though. The challenge is, what's the reference point? If I'm doing it in New York, somebody is doing it in Miami, and somebody else is doing it in San Francisco, and somewhere in, say, in Dar es Salaam or Lagos, how, how, how can we reconcile this? What's the reference point? So it's very interesting to know that for each country, each location, they have their own reference points. And for the US, usually the reference point is what is called the mean low, lower low water. So we go to the, the low water point, you take all those for about 17 years, almost 18 years, and then you calculate what is the mean lower low water. And that's where you go with, with the reference. And so you could say, hey, wait, Kamazima, that's crazy because that's gonna change. And the true indeed, it's gonna change. And so the way we calculate the mean lower low water and also the way we calculate the mean sea level, the mean sea level can change because our reference point is a moving reference in a way. It's not permanent. And there's another way we can do this. We can use satellites. So satellites we measure from, from space and so there's very little move, movement, but satellites also still need a reference. And so we, we need to agree, there's a, there's a geoid kind of a general reference um, height where we think that's where the, the, it should be our zero and we measure that, but even that, sometimes can be affected by the flow of lava, the distribution of rocks underneath. And so the, 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 the solution here is to have an agreed datum. 
So in, 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 in North America, we have the NA, what we call the, 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 the NAV 87, that was the, eight, the 27 and then the 84. And we use those as more of permanent reference points. So that's the, the bit I, 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 I had about the tides. It's, it's a lot, there's a lot more about tides, a lot more interesting facts about tides, but this is what we have for today. And I want to get to the take home messages here. And uh, so we, we know that tides are caused by gravitational forces and their astronomical body. Don't forget about the rotational force, well, the, the, the centrifugal force. You, you need the centrifugal force to balance them out. And um, tides of uh, any given place can change, and uh, tides uh, can affect the mean sea level. And also the mean sea level, if the mean sea level changes, it can affect tides. So it's, it, there's a kind of a feedback mechanism be between the two. So what I presented so far is taught in uh, uh, introductory oceanography class, MAR 101. And uh, it's also taught by, uh, it's taught in, in coastal oceanography, MAR 333. It's taught in marine physics, MAR 350. And uh, it's also taught in introduction to physical oceanography, MAR 352. And if you want to do more research on tides, you can contact uh, Professor Bowman, Professor Wolf, uh, my pro Professor Swanson, we'll put him here, and, uh, and, and, and I. So now it's time for us to play, and uh, Amanda is going to give us uh, the second polling question. This is a very simple question, actually. It just wants you to for you to choose what, where you want to go for vacation. I see, I see quite some few adventurous people who want to go to the Maldives. Uh, I'm impressed. I thought everybody would end up in uh, the northern Key Largo or maybe to, 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 to the Bolivar Peninsula. That's exciting. Cool. So, we, we have a tie uh, between the, 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 the North Key Lago and, uh, and, uh, and, um, and the Nichols Town in the Bahamas. I, I, would go, I would go to the Maldives, but that's my choice. Everybody has a choice. Thank you very much for participating in, in, this, in, in this poll. And this was the, the original version of the poll question. I I put it, made it kind of fancy. I do, we had to prune it down. So let's go very quickly through these 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 um, choices we made. And Ocean City. And if you look at Ocean City, and I've put kind of a circle around it, is. It's looking on, it's on a kind of a spit island, and uh, that's a, mostly composed of sand and low level lying. And you can imagine if, if sea, sea level rose by about, a, say, 1.5 meters, most of that uh, uh, island will be gone. This is North Key Lago, and uh, about five. People chose that uh, location, and it's not too far from Miami, and uh, it's also very similar to the Ocean City location, and very prone to to to, to sea level rise. Let's go to the Bahamas. So this is where in the ocean, and it's it's not very different. Nichols, Nichols is around here and it is also very vulnerable to, to, the, to sea level rise. 
Now, the Maldives, I was impressed by a few people who chose the Maldives because not very many people know about the Maldives. It's off India. These are a chain of islands off India. Beautiful, gorgeous place. And the highest point, listen to this, the highest point on the Maldives islands is 1.5 meters above sea level. And that's where the airport is. So even when you have, if, if, you, if you have a very strong uh, hurricane causing a surge, it could easily swallow up the, 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 the islands. And the Bolivar Peninsula is still the same you're talking about in Texas. And it's, it's, it's also very vulnerable to the Maldives. So, uh, as, as I said earlier, most of these places are beautiful, and that's why we chose them to go for vacation. And they are on the coast or they are in the ocean. Uh, but the most important thing I want to point here is um, they, are, they, are, they are vulnerable to sea level rise. So what, what, what are the non-astronomical factors that may cause sea level rise? We know sea level rise can be affected by tides. So, and that's very much controlled by astronomical forces, you know, by the moon and the sun and the stars and stuff. But you know that, what, what else? So if we change, or if it happens that the shape of the coastline changes, that can affect the, um, the, the can, can affect the sea, the, the, the sea level. If we change the bathymetry, let's say because of navigation, we wanna change the bathymetry, or there's erosion, which is not caused by, by, by man, but just by, uh, by, by nature, that can change, change the, the, the sea level. But also atmospheric pressure can change the sea level. And this is what normally storms do. When you have storms coming over an area, the, like Isaias, what, what Isaias did is, is this is a low, low pressure system coming over, passing through the, re the region, and that sucks up water. So normally when you have a storm, a storm, a low, a storm coming through, the, 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 the water will rise up. And that's, that's always the compounding uh, complication with the, with the storms. Also, land, land sea breezes cycle, if they, the, those change, they, they, they will change the sea level. And wind-driven currents, or if you have sustained winds pushing uh, water against the coastline, that would increase the sea level. The last bit, which I want to factor which I want to talk about is climate change. And so let's see how, first how the atmospheric pressure causes the sea level to change. As I said, if, if you have, if you follow my point, if you have the high water, the high water will kind of like depress the water, the water level. So the, what the, sea, the sea level will, 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 will go down. And when you have a low pressure system, like in the right hand case, the water will rise. So it will be like pulled up. Now, when we consider uh, climate, if the hydrological cycle changes, say there's much more water uh, being produced, or we remove, if we reduce water from land going into the ocean, there will be a relative change in the sea level. If, we, if the ice sheets melt, like the Antarctic ice sheet and the Greenland ice sheet melt, that will affect the, 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 the sea level. So th these, these are, the, are factors which are very, very, very sensitive uh, to, to, to climate. And also there's the ocean, the atmosphere, ocean interaction that might also uh, affect, the, affect the sea level. So 
Climate is very important. That's what we've established. But let's dig deeper and see exactly how, what happens. So if, if the earth gets warmer, the air, the atmosphere first starts getting warm and that, uh, that, that, that heat is, 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 is swallowed by the ocean and the ocean also gets warmer. As the ocean gets warmer, there is thermal expansion. The water will expand. And if it will expand, obviously the sea level will have to expand. But if, all, in addition, if we lose, if we lose the, the ice by the glaciers and the ice sheets, it's like unplugging your freezers. So that water it melts and comes out. And in, in case of the ocean, it, 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 all that water will go into the ocean. And so we've added water. It's not a, a, a matter of expansion or contraction. In this case, we've just added water and that means the sea level will increase. And the last point is if we reduce the water storage on land, that water has to go somewhere and obviously it goes to the, to the ocean and that's what increases the sea level. So, I'm sure you've heard of um, the, 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 the carbon concentration in, right now is, 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 is getting to be quite high. And uh, it, we, there was a time when we were thinking, when it gets to 400, but now we're talking maybe when it gets to 500 parts per million volume. So the, this slide here, I put it here to show you, these are what are called the representative um, uh, action pathways. So, so the, these representative um, pathways, uh, in this case, what, what you have, let's start with the lowest, the RCP um, uh, uh, 2.6. The representative concentration pathway 2.6 means it's, equ it's an equivalent of about four, 490 parts per million uh, of, carbon, uh, of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And then we have the 4.5, but today I just want us to pay attention to the RCP 8.5. This is when the carbon concentration carbon dioxide concentration will be around 1370 parts per, 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 per million volume. That's quite high, right? It's kind of scary to think that we can get there. But guess what? The climate scientists have now almost given up. Uh, they, we, we don't think we can talk about RCP 2.6. We don't think we need even to talk about RCP 4.5 because we know we're going to go way past that by 2100. Uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about RCP 6, but the main one we're looking at is 8.5. That's scary. And so the consequences of that is that the sea level is going to be rising quite a bit. Now, for comparison, again, if you can follow my, my, um, my cursor, the, 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 the blue line is for the RCP 2.6, and the red line is for the RCP 8.5. And the, sh the, sh the shading shows you kind of the variation because we're using models and the models are allowed to have a little bit of uncertainty in, in them. So we have a range of, 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 of a prediction, of prediction. And there are different models which do this. So if we concentrate on RCP 8.5, you can see the average puts us about almost 8.8 meter, 0.8 of a meter. Uh, and the highest puts us at about a meter by 2100, by year 2100. That's where the sea level is gonna be. That's scary. So if it gets there, what are the contributing factors which get us there? The contributing factors which get us there are one, the thermal expansion, as I said earlier, uh, glaciers, 
and the, 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 and the melting of ice sheets, but you can see that the glaciers are the most, uh, uh, what contributes, contributes the sea level rise most. And so we have to worry about the, the warming of the climate. So um, take home messages here as that we have threats to coastal communities. And uh, we know that 40%, almost, almost half of the world's population lives within 60 miles from, from shore. And uh, that doesn't change very much from the US statistics. It's very much very similar. If you live on, uh, on Long Island, uh, you should be worried about the, this salt water intrusion because that will affect our, our groundwater uh, uh, drinking, uh, drinking water supplies. And it will, it, it will uh, contaminate lots of uh, irrigation supplies and stuff. And it will also destroy um, a coastal habitat. So it's, it's, it's very important to, 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 to study the, the, sea, the sea level rise. And so I want to finish off by uh, pointing to you uh, some of the what is in the news. If you look at the, what comes out in the news, I like this bit where I, 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 I have a comment of what. Uh, so it says, I'll read it to you. It says, it's most, it mo is New York City sinking? It mo most certainly is. According to a study reported in the Scientific American, New York could by 2100 have sunk around five feet and in parenthesis, 12.7 meters. My interest being a, a, a former math major, I was interested by the 12.7. One, that is ridiculously high and it's not, it's, it's not gonna happen. It, it, it is just a typo. It was supposed to be 1.27 meters. So, and this is real. I, 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 I didn't cook it up, but it still points to the, to the fact that um, the, the this sea level is rising and it's got a lot of consequences, very expensive consequences for us. And uh, if you wanna do more research on that, you can contact Professor Bowman and uh, and uh, Professor Wolf, me, and uh, Professor Swanson. And uh, now I'll be ready for questions. Thank you very much. Do ocean currents if affect the tides? Yes, ocean currents affect the tides, especially when, 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 they, when they, they have high speeds, they tend to bank, they, they form a banking like that. So. Uh, Along the coastline, you're gonna have higher tide. When they slow down, they'll they will kind of level out, so you see a lower sea level. Um, are ocean currents affected by centrifugal force you mentioned? Mm, no, they are affected by other forces like the Coriolis force, but not not by the centrifugal force. Do items that we launch in space have any impact on tides? Of course they do. Uh, just kidding. Um, they do, but the effect is so tiny that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Um, let me see if there are other questions. How do tides affect the size of waves? That's a good question. So tides in general, in general will not affect waves, but this is how they can affect the waves because the waves you see at the beach depend, the height of that wave depend on the water depth. And the, the shallower it is, the higher the height of the wave is gonna 
is, is going to become because as it, as the wave shows, it gets compressed, and so it just lifts up. You see it as higher and higher. So that's the only way I can think of how the tides would affect affect the waves. Um, do some areas of Manhattan were built on landfill. Does that affect the ocean volume? Yeah, yeah, strictly speaking, yes, but compared to the ocean volume, the, the little tip at the battery where people use to, 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 to throw their trash, uh, that's a very tiny little bit. It doesn't, it doesn't affect, it, 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 it's a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage. So it doesn't really matter. What is the research that you are currently working on? Oh, that's a good question. So I, I have three, three, three interesting pro projects going on right now. I, I work in Long Island Sound. I'm more interested in what, are the f what is the physics of the factors that goes on to cause hypoxia. So we, 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 we build models to try and uh, predict hypoxia and uh, how to better predict hypoxia for management. So, and also how climate change in 30, 40, 50 years will affect hypoxia. So that's the first thing. The other project which uh, um, uh, just finished was looking at tiny little waves called coastal trapped waves. So these um, tend to be very tiny. They are small. They are about 20 centimeters high, about this much. And um, they, but they are amazing with the speed they can produce. They can go uh, as fast as uh, 100 centimeters a second. That's really fast in the ocean to, to move that fast. And the third one, I'm, I'm, I've just started a project to try and see how climate change will affect a disease called schistosomiasis. Schistosomiasis is a, is, is a, is a, is a freshwater disease. These are the, the, the parasite gets in, in your body, penetrates through your hands or soul, and it, 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 it will go in, into your intestines and get stuck there. And you can pee blood and all your stool can have blood. It affects about 200 million people per year worldwide. So I'll be studying this in, in, in Brazil and the Cote d'Ivoire or Ivory Coast. Uh, so those are the, 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 uh, the projects I'm doing. And uh, I'm trying to read this. Uh, are any scientists at Stonebrook working on ways how to reduce salt in the water in our local area? Huh, not that I know of, and I hope this is not reducing the salt in the ocean um, uh, because you just want to keep the ocean balanced. Um, if it is for the drinking water, uh, n n not that I know of. Probably, maybe, but not, I don't know anybody who works on that area here. For an undergraduate student, what is the best way to get involved in research? Huh. Simple. You talk to me. Uh, as Amanda said, I'm the director of undergraduate uh, programs at, for SOMAS. So I'm the, I'm the liaison between you and the faculty. Say, you might want to do, you might want to look at sea level rise and I'll but you don't know Professor Swanson. Now you come to me and I said, you know what? I know somebody who does what you want to do and you go talk to him or I can talk to him for you and I connect you. So my job is to connect the students to do that. But you can also go, professors are simple, easy people. They are there already waiting for you to go and talk to them. That's what they get paid for. So you can just go walk, walk up in their office and say, look here, I'm interested. I want to I wanna do research on hypoxia. I want to do research uh, on, um, on, on, on seabirds. And they, 
if, if that is their field, they will tell you yes. Or if they are not, they are not able because they have other things going on, they will tell you somebody else who can do that for you. Um, can you speak on any sort of tidal turbines like those used in your renewable energy? So yes, so these, uh, the, the, the tidal turbines actually use the to and the fro motion and um, or, or to and fro motion of the, the, when you have flood, so the, 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 the tide would flood and then the tide would ebb. As it moves in, that will make the, the, the turbines rotate. But the turbines are designed cleverly in such a way that if during, during flood, the, the flood stage, the turbines will rotate. So they say they are rotating uh, in, in, in a way it will, that will be clock, uh, uh, clockwise. And uh, during ebb, they will still rotate the same way. So it's a clever way of um, designing a, 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 a turbine. So that way you, 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 you are able to produce, to produce electricity without any, any confusion. So um, East River, has been proposed for many years, and the Professor Bowman has been pro proposing this so that we can we can we can harness power from 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 the East River, and the speeds we have actually are enough to produce viable power, but there is one political will and the engineering fee, and also if you do that, you are almost not almost you are you are blocking blocking the the East River as a as a as a as a, uh, a navigable channel for 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 barges and for boats to pass to go to 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 the uh, upper side and even to on to to, to Long Island. Um, so I think the. I don't see any more questions. I thank you very much for attending today's talk. I, I hope you got something, got a flavor of what is in store for you here at, at Stonebrook. I welcome you all and I hope to see you in some of my classes. Thank you very much. <laughs>